Alright, time to do another camera comparison, but this time it is the iPhone 12 versus the iPhone 13 versus the iPhone 16. Now in my previous video, the iPhone 11 and 12 didn't give much of a competition to the 16, but let's see if the iPhone 13 can spice things up a little. Let's start with the usual portrait shot. The first photo is a close up shot and right off the bat you can notice the iPhone 12 doing a poor job with my hair, the glasses as well as my ears. Not a great start for the 12. The 13 and 16 on the other hand are really close. Both phones are doing an amazing job with my ears, the glasses as well as the hair. The only thing I don't like about the 13 is its color reproduction. The colors are not as saturated as I would like and there seems to be a weird glow slash brightening effect taking place with this photo. In the second shot, the same effect can be noticed on both the 12 and 13 but it's not as bad on the 13 as it is on the 12. Honestly, I have no idea why this happens but it's really weird and it only seems to affect the shots with people as the subject. Anyways, the 16 is clearly miles better than the other two. One thing to point out is that all phones are doing a top notch job in edge detection. At least that's nice to see. In the following shots, you'll notice a trend with the iPhone 13 where it brightens the photo compared to the 12 and 16. While it might look pleasing to the eyes, it's not an accurate representation of the skin color. I mean, in this fourth shot where I am in the shade, the iPhone 13 just brightens my body. While it looks nice, it just appears fake in the sense that it's not possible to take such a shot. It's like someone is holding a light near my face. The 12 and 16 on the other hand are much closer to actual reality. Now the same is evident from the next photo. The black levels are nowhere close to what they should be. Only the 16 seems to produce a photo that's near perfect. Now the last shot is probably the closest one. While the 13 is still a tad bit brighter than I would like, I think we'll give it a pass on this one. Overall, I would say an easy win for the iPhone 16 in portrait photography. Let's see how these phones perform in non-portrait photography. In this case, the trend for the iPhone 13 still continues. Now it's not as bad in the first photo, but wait till you see the next three. The first shot is the only one where the 12 and 13 come closer to the 16's performance. Honestly, in this photo, the 12 is actually doing better than the 13. Now the next three shots are where the 12 and 13 start to lose their plot. Maybe it's the background or I don't know what, but this place is where the 12 and 13 always seem to mess up. The color science is not correct, the black levels are low and the photos just appear a bit washed out. When I enter the scene, the 13 almost seems to get its shed together but the 12 still stays the same. I think the 16 proves how much better Apple's processing has become over these past few iterations. The last photo is just a complete disgrace for the 13. I mean look at how much brighter the face is. It's as if the phone decided to straight up increase the brightness of the subject by 100% or so. Well, at least the 12 is still better and holding its own. After looking at these portrait and non-portrait shots, it's easy to see why I would choose the iPhone 16. Heck, I would even recommend the iPhone 12 over the iPhone 13. I don't know what's going on with the iPhone 13, but maybe it's always been like that. Let me know in the comments if you own an iPhone 13 and if you have experienced this over brightening filter. With that, let's move on to some random daytime shots. While the 16 pretty much had nailed the portrait and non-portrait shots, these pictures are where it's hard to choose a winner. Most aspects of a photo such as color reproduction, white balance, exposure, contrast, etc. are all comparable on these phones. The only slight difference I notice is the natural blur on the iPhone 16 which is more pronounced than the other two due to its bigger sensor. Not a huge deal by any chance. And then there's this one photo where the 16 has the sky in focus whereas it's washed out in the other phones. Also, I'm making a video about AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation, so subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss it. The ANC on the new AirPods is a game changer. Now just because the shots look similar doesn't mean the iPhone 16 is not good compared to the iPhone 12 and 13. 
Keep in mind you are looking at these photos after being processed on a video editor and then compressed by YouTube while uploading. When looking at these pictures side by side, there is more detail and sharpness in the iPhone 16 shots. And then of course, the iPhone 16 camera has much more capabilities such as the 2x zoom, cinematic video mode, the ability to change the mode of the photo with the tone changing feature, and much more. Basically, it all comes down to the versatility of the 16. Another interesting comparison I wanted to do was with the zoom capabilities of the phones. While the 16 can do a 10x zoom, the 12 and 13 are limited to 5x. Also, the 16 can technically do a 2x optical zoom due to that 48 megapixel sensor. Now, telephoto shots are where the 16 shines. The amount of detail and sharpness the 16 can preserve at 5x zoom is just straight up amazing. While the 2x zoom shots look pretty similar on all phones, the 16 is a tiny bit sharper, especially when looking at the photos side by side in real world. Moving on to the video from the main sensor. While this is a 4K 30p video, all phones can do 60 frames as well and also Dolby Vision with the 12 limited to 30 frames. Here the 16 shines through and through. The colors are much more natural and balanced. Also, the 12 and 13 are not that far behind. I do prefer the look of the 13 over the 12. Also, if you crop in, the 16 seems to preserve more detail and sharpness. While both the 13 and 16 have sensor shift OIS, I do feel the latter has a slightly more stable video but let me know in the comments if I'm being too picky. Next up are some selfies. The 12 megapixel sensor is the same across all phones bearing a few minor differences. Even then, the iPhone 16 manages to produce better looking shots with higher color accuracy than the other two. I guess that's where Apple's latest photo processing prowess helps. I must say, I'm still satisfied with the shots taken by the other two iPhones. Another minor difference you'll notice is the stronger blur effect on the iPhone 16. As for the video, it's almost the same across each iPhone. I'm also sharing a minor snippet of the video I took and you can judge for yourself if there's any difference or not. With that out of the way, let's compare some ultra wide shots. The issue of over brightening the subject once again comes to haunt the iPhone 13. It's only the first shot where the 12 and 13 give a tough competition to the 16, but other than that, the 16 easily takes the crown. I mean, it's not even close. The last photo shows how far ahead the iPhone 16 is than the other two. We'll keep this going with some random ultra wide shots. The one thing I've noticed is that when we remove people from the equation, that's when the ultra wide photos start to become a replica of each other. All phones have well balanced and color accurate shots. Honestly, if I remove the naming, you wouldn't even be able to tell apart most of these shots. The only two shots I could really tell the iPhone 16 doing better is the one where the sky is washed out on the 12 and 13 while it's still focused on the 16 and the other one where the 16 seems to do much better job with the sun than the other two. Other than that, the ultra wide shots are the exact same. Personally, I tend to use the ultra wide the least unless I need to cram a lot of people in the shot. And finally, let's take a look at some nighttime photos. All the sensors of each of these phones are capable of taking low light photos. Now while the shots do look similar, the 16 has the upper leg with more detailed and well-lit shots due to that bigger 48 megapixel sensor. Even then, if you take the bigger main sensor out of the equation, the 16 still produces better shots with its ultra-wide camera. The 12 and 13 have too much softness or that grainy effect going on. Now I'm someone who doesn't take too many nighttime photos, but I guess if you are someone who does, then you probably need the latest and greatest offering from Apple. And the story continues with video as well. Now while the 12 and 13 have always suffered with lens glare, the 16 is no exception. Now as much as Apple can claim better coding and all that, lens glare is always an issue. This video has plenty of light so the results aren't that different. And that's it for this camera comparison. Now it's quite clear that when it comes to capturing photos of people, the iPhone 16 is miles ahead of the other two. And that is probably the most important thing for the majority of the people. But if you are the kind of person who's taking random daytime shots like 90% of the time, 
the other two phones are still pretty good. Personally, I'm blessed to be able to afford the latest and greatest iPhones, but if you cannot, I believe the iPhone 10, 10R, 11, 12, 13, all are still great phones. And that's it for this video folks, subscribe and I will catch you all in the next one.